Good morning, folks. We have a number of items to discuss today, and they can all be found in between the mantle and our star. Let's begin there over at spaceweathernews.com. We're checking out a very quiet last 24 hours up there. We had a bit of coronal movement near the sunspot and behind it incoming. There weren't any big CMEs, it was just a filament that whipped through the corona, did not release or eject, towards the sunspot and a little pop was released there. There was no CME associated with that, certainly nothing major coming at Earth in the sunspots, so they've doubled in size again, but have failed to produce any more solar flares, and here is why. When we come and take a look at the magnetism of the sunspot, the mixing, the blue positive at the northern reach of the central portion, is now gone, and the trailing positive group isn't really interacting with the front or even the middle negative. We don't have much flare potential there. We'll keep monitoring for development today. Solar wind here. You can see we are starting to gain a bit of variability and fluctuation. We are more intense than ambient quiet levels. No geomagnetic storms as of yet, but as of yet we are still waiting for the fastest and most intense part of that coronal hole stream. It'll be coming from the departing edge there, and we do see the next one in coming up on the north top left. Most interesting earthquake the last day was a 4.9 that struck way, way north up near the geographic North Pole. But the most important lithospheric news of the last day happened in Bali, Indonesia. Mount Agung erupted. Not the big one that we're waiting for, but perhaps one of the precursors. A 10-minute eruption spewed ash and smoke two kilometers into the sky, just as the president had arrived to reassure tourists that the island was safe. The top story today is coming from Space Weather, an AGU journal. They're describing the spacecraft's surface charging hazards due to different types of space weather, and they have found that while a lot of this is what we already knew, we have equinox variability, the midnight position locally is more vulnerable than, say, the 6 o'clock a.m. or p.m. positions, but they have also found that even at the lowest energy levels of electron flux, the satellite hazards can be 10 times the spacecraft design guidelines. Pretty good time to be happy about the Earth facing quiet. Up next, Arecibo in Puerto Rico returning radar images of Phaeton's past not too long ago. Middle of the month it swung by and their radar images give us a clue as to a very dark, probably very deep crater that we didn't know existed on the rock before. Lastly folks, we have discussed a number of times the danger of neonicotinoid pesticides. They are a major problem and a big part of what is killing the bees, not to mention that they are very, very harmful for aquatic invertebrates. Turns out, even though the EPA has known this for quite some time and has even published a report on that itself, they are strongly considering the allowance of its use over more than 150 million acres of U.S. farmland. Ugh. And in addition to the space weather, magnetic reversal, electrical theories that we're going to be hearing at Observing the Frontier 2018, we do have health issues in there as well, like GMOs and that bee story we just mentioned. We'd love to see you out there. Not many tickets left. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 5 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.